All right, so Karen Ann Preston has a comment here. She says, I think Satan has been loosed. Well, it seems like it. Okay, so let's first address where this is coming from. Of course, this is in reference to Revelation 20, verse 7, where it says, And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. Okay. Now, in this scenario, the thousand years are already finished. Okay, you, you've heard me talk a lot about people that are claiming the thousand years is coming after the Lord Jesus Christ comes in the clouds of heaven. This scenario is everything has already happened. And right now we're in a little season. Right, and uh, right there it is. And he must be loosed a little season. Now, and then that would have to assume, of course, that nobody's reigning with Christ right now because this happens during the thousand years. They lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years, and when the thousand years are expired, they are no longer living and reigning with Christ right now. This would mean that we're all doomed, right? And there are a good number of people that are teaching this, and it is absolutely false. We that are born of God live and reign with Christ right now. We are priests of God and of Christ right now. All right, so that let's get into this a little bit. What does this mean when the thousand years are expired? Well, this can only mean this happens at the end of the world. Okay, so let's go to... Matthew 13. I'm telling you, Jesus teaches this stuff better than anybody. All right, and then when he gives us the parable of the wheat and the tear, this is a great parable, a great example of the end of the world. All right, and so what happens at the end of of the world at the end of the world is the time of the harvest I will say to the reapers gather ye together first the tares all right and then bind them in bundles to burn them but gather the wheat into my barn very simple the enemy or the unsaved is gathered together and burned the saved are gathered into his barn all right, now by reading the rest of the Bible, we learn that we are going to be lifted up when he comes in the clouds of heaven. We're going to be changed in the twinkling of an eye. First the dead in Christ, then those of us which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Also in Matthew 24, it talks about, and he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet, and he shall, and they shall gather together his elect. So this gathering together of the elect is that moment when we are lifted up in the air, and our enemy is gathered at our feet. Okay, so let's re relate this to Revelation 20, when Satan is loosed. And he is gathering together the unsaved. Right? So the angels of God gather the, together the elect. And Satan gathers together the unsaved. Okay? And this is all at the end of the world. Okay? It's not uh, any more complicated than that. All right, now let me. Uh, there was another point here I want to make that might help. You know why? Why is it that you know the thousand years are expired and then Satan is loosed? Um, because we see um, the devil deceiving people today. 
know, I've heard the claim that, well, if Satan is loosed, he wouldn't be deceiving people. Well, that's not true at all. Okay, so the re there's a whole reason why Satan is bound, and we got to understand what that means. Um, it's really not complicated, but I want to help somebody see this. I pray that somebody's eyes open after hearing this, okay? So we have to go all the way back to the Old Testament. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to tell the whole story of the Bible, but you know how Abraham offered his son Isaac and um oh I, I want to point I want to find a I want to find a verse it doesn't matter does it man I tell you what and he said take thou now take now thy son or thine only son Isaac whom thou lovest and get thee into the land of Moriah and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I will tell thee of all right and so without question without dispute Abraham is going to do this uh, now the angel came to uh, Abraham and stopped him from doing that. Now, um, what Abraham demonstrated here was great faith. All right, and so in his place, God offers his son. Right, and so that his son is Jesus Christ as a burnt offering to cover our sins once and for all okay well why is that significant well because the promise that God gave Abraham and his seed afterward um, we now from that point on we go from we go into a time when there is the nation of God all right the promise has been made and there is the nation of God consisting of the 12 tribes of Israel which is Isaac's son Jacob okay and of the 12 tribes of Israel it they consist of the nation of God outside of that nation of God is essentially the seed of the serpent these are Satan's people outside of that nation of God all right so you think about it uh, we the people of God today are inside God's walls and people that are not saved are outside of God's walls you think about Genesis 3 verse 15 I will put enmity between thee and the woman and, to, and between thy seed and her seed it shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel the seed of the serpent is outside the wall and the seed of the woman which is Abraham's seed which is Christ is in we are inside the wall so I made this little Oh, what's going on here? That's not. Did something go wrong? Boom. Isn't that weird? Alright, let's do it this way. So, I, I got this little diagram here, whatever you want to call it, illustration thingamajig. So, we are the people of God inside the circle. Outside the circle is the enemy, the unsaved. Now, um people inside the wall are the people of God and 
God is merciful unto them. People outside of God are not of God, or outside of the circle are not of God, and they do not obtain mercy. Okay, so during this time, um, essentially Satan has dominion over them, and um, God uses that to punish Israel. All right, Israel is the people of God and outside, you know, if they're going to, you know, they're warned over and over, don't cross that line, don't go over there and worship their gods. We see this over and over and they keep getting tempted to do that and Israel keeps getting punished, they keep failing and we see this all throughout the Bible, failure after failure after failure and moral of the story is we're all failures right so here comes Jesus and he essentially knocks down the walls alright so now the people of God is given the nation of God is given to whosoever believes alright does that make sense so now there is no circle alright so now it's available the kingdom of God is available for everybody. So no longer is the nation of God only for those inside the circle. Now it is available for whosoever believes. Therefore, when this happens, Satan is bound. So Satan can no longer gather up his armies to come against the people of God, the nation of God. All right, so the bound, Satan is bound, prevented from that happening because the nation of God consists of people all around the world. No longer are they in the circle, they are everywhere. Okay, you think of this as a, a farmer's field and he's growing wheat. He's got wheat all over, and in the midst of the wheat, he has tares, false wheat. And so come harvest time, the angels will gather together the wheat, and they will burn them. But the, I'm sorry, what I say? The angels will gather together the tares and burn them, and then the they gather together the wheat into his barn and um, they are changed in the twinkling of an eye. They are transformed from mortal bodies to immortal bodies. All right, They are resurrected from the dead and um, they meet the Lord in the air and of course our enemy is gathered at our feet right they are gathered at our feet and fire comes down from God out of heaven and devours them all and this of course goes back to Genesis 3:15 and it shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel till I make thine enemies thy footstool Right? I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. Alright, so that's the difference in the world that we live in now. Okay, so before, so before Jesus came, before G baby Jesus was born, the nation of God consisted of people that lived within you know a particular group right the nation of God was uh, originally the 12 tribes of Israel of course that dwindled down as time passed 
because they could not live up to the standard of perfection. All right, and then ultimately Jesus comes and offers his body as the sacrifice for all that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life okay so let's go to first Peter 2 if I'm remembering correctly here where it says we are a royal priesthood and holy nation a peculiar people all right which in time past were not a people but are now the people of God which had not obtained mercy but now have obtained mercy all right so there is an obvious change when Jesus came all right and he said look I'm gonna take the nation of God from you and give it to a nation bringing forth the fruits there of all right the kingdom of God should be taken from you and given to a nation bringing forth the fruits of thereof. So now we are the people of God. All right, so before this, the people of God was in a circle, a group of people, and now it's available for whosoever believes in Jesus Christ. Does that make sense? And that's why this is listed as a thousand year period. Alright, because we live and reign with Christ right now. When we are born of God, Jesus abides in us and we abide in Him. Right? We are born of God. And then at the end of the world is when Satan is loosed. Alright, because now, hey, we're up in the air. So now go ahead, Satan, go ahead and gather your people against God. All right, so that's what he was always been trying to do. Satan has always been trying to war against the people of God. Always. And before Jesus, Satan would try to war against the circle. Now Satan's being bound, and there is no more circle. And until Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven and we are lifted up, now the circle is up in the air. All right, it's like uh, dangling, uh, you know, a dead rabbit in front of uh, a pit bull. All right, so if it's that dead rabbit's on the ground, the pit bull's gonna devour it. But if you put that dead rabbit on a string and lift it up in the air the pit bull will get underneath of it and jump up and try to get it All right, that's that's what they do All right so also with Satan and him gathering together his people they will be gathered together at our feet and then fire comes down from God out of heaven and devours them all it shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel right till I make thine enemies thy footstool all right so this is prophesied all throughout the Bible and you know I get it the problem is you got so many false teachers that don't understand nothing teaching things that they ought not be teaching and one of the things that really, um, you know, gets me and burns my butt is this idea that unsaved people can wait until after Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. They can wait at, till after that to start believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Bible's very clear when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, it is the end of the world. Therefore, there are no more chances, no more opportunities for the unsaved to be saved. That's it. That's the end 
of the world. So it's pure wickedness, pure evil wickedness to tell an unsaved person, oh, hey, just wait. No, no, you don't have to believe now. Just wait. You'll see Jesus coming, and then you'll see us being changed in the twinkling of an eye. And then once you see all that, then you can start believing. So you don't worry about it. You're cool. You're good. No, that's pure wickedness. Because when that happens, fire is going to come down and kill them. And you've deceived, misled, lied to an unsaved person that could be even your own child. It could be somebody else's child. It will be somebody else's child. Somebody that you love, somebody else that, uh, you know, others love. You know what I'm saying? That you, people that are loved, you're teaching them directly or indirectly, consciously or subconsciously, it doesn't matter. You're teaching them that they can wait. And that's just wicked, pure wickedness. That's why I got a problem. That's why I'm, you know, I have a fire burning to teach this stuff every day. I, I don't really, I really think it's as simple as anything that anybody teaches on this subject. Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. It is the end of the world. Right now we live and reign with Christ. Right now we are priests of God, a priest of God and of Christ. And right now we reign with Christ. We that are born of God. I mean, that's as simple as it gets. This idea of a thousand year period, a zombie period after Jesus comes, that doesn't make any sense. What do you got, people still having sex? Well, then it's not the end of the world, is it? When people still dying after Jesus comes? Well, then when he comes, it's not the end of the world. That essentially makes Jesus a liar. To say that, Jesus says when he comes in the clouds of heaven, it's the end of the world. And you're saying, no, it's not the end of the world. Right? He's asked, what shall be the sign of that coming out of the end of the world? It does not get more plainer, more clearer than that. <clears throat> and the end of the world is when he comes in the clouds of heaven at the last trump with the great sound of a trumpet the saved are gathered together right, now you're saying no the unsaved still have a chance that's not that's not true you're lying you're deceiving the unsaved people why would you do that you know what I mean I just read the Bible and try to understand it and I think part of the main problem here is people do not trust the words that they read I mean I could you could stare at this for 24 straight hours and still not see it if you don't believe what you're seeing and there's a reason why the Bible says even unto this day when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. And it's because they don't have eyes to see, nor do they have ears to hear. Because if they did, then they would believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And they would hear and they would see and they would be healed and they would understand and I think what people do is they don't try to understand this they listen to what somebody else teaches because they don't want to believe the Word of God they would rather believe somebody that teaches the subject and I'm telling you this is a simple this is very simple this is more simple than anything that's being taught. It's more simple than this idea, well, the thousand years is over. It's already happened. It's more simple than this idea, although the thousand years is coming after Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. I mean, 
when your eyes are open you see this is all talking about everything that we've learned about in the Bible all right this is not new information none of this is it's just essentially giving us the same information we're getting all throughout the Bible all right, when Jesus comes on his white throne his great white throne right in his judgment day right the judgment is do you have sin or do you have no sin the only way to have no sin is to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ right he covers your sin now are you believing are you depending on yourself to be a good person if so you're going straight to hell there is none good but God and Jesus Christ is God Almighty. So the only way for us to be pure is it be, is because He's pure, and if we got to put our one hundred percent faith in Him and what He has done, we're completely, totally dependent on God. We can't do it. The example after example after example in the Bible. Even in your own lives, there's failure after failure after failure. That's why we need a Savior. And thanks be to God, we do have a Savior. It's the Lord Jesus Christ. Just as Moses led his people out of Egypt, Jesus Christ will lead us out of this wicked world. Okay, let me say I appreciate this one simple little comment. It means a lot to me. I want to be able to clear these things up, to teach them better, to um, you know continue this conversation because it's so important. It's so easy. It's so simple. And uh, it uh, seems to me like people today, they don't care about easy. They don't care about simple. They want flashy Hollywood stuff. Well, they're going to get flashy Hollywood stuff. It won't be long. It won't be long and they will get the flashy Hollywood stuff. Again, thanks Karen. Appreciate it.